In the summer of 2023, I rode my bike from Jasper, Alberta, Canada to Antelope Wells, New Mexico along the Great Divide. In this video, I'll introduce what I brought with me, including my bike, bags, clothing, tools, and camping gear. Part of the impetus for riding the divide was the purchase of my Moots Route 45 gravel bike. Made of titanium, it had a great combination of durability and pliability to allow for a comfortable long distance ride. The bike has a Shimano GRX group set. When I started the route, I had a 42 tooth chain ring in the front and a 42 tooth cassette in the rear. This one to one ratio set up for Minnesota riding turned out to be challenging for the mountainous divide route. In New Mexico, I finally switched to a more climbing friendly 40 tooth chain ring and 46 tooth cassette. I appreciated the upgrade I added to my bike of Hope four piston brakes in the front and rear, which helped with braking on long downhills on a loaded bike. I selected a Wilderness Trail Bikes woman specific Coda saddle, which felt good for all of the longest days on the divide. Extras like Chris King bearings kept my bike riding reliably throughout. I added a Sun Dynamo hub to my front wheel to generate power for my electronics. It was connected to a Sinewave Cycles reactor USB output that I kept a power bank plugged into. For tires, I was riding a Renee Hurst Fleecer Ridge tire in front. At 55, it was nearly the width of a mountain bike tire. In the back, I used a Renee Hurst Oracle tire. The 48 width gave me extra mud clearance. I installed Profile Designs aero bars to supply an additional hand position while riding. I mostly use them for mounting my electronics and drying laundry. A timber bell attached to my aero bars helped me alert bears to my presence. I selected Shimano 8120 Trail clipless pedals for pedaling efficiency and a platform that I could use if my cleats were clogged. A gear strap held two Tubolito 29 inch inner tubes in case of flats I couldn't repair. I installed a Swood T bar to hold my front bag off my cables and housing. Here's an overview of the bags I used on this trip. I had a Revelate Design Spine Locked 16 liter seat bag that I used for clothing and some electronics. The bag itself worked great, but I dreaded packing it each day. They make a new version that's easier to get on and off the bike that I'd recommend over this one. I had a Sidero wedgie bag for holding bike tools. I used this Sidero tank top tube bag for carrying on the bike snacks. These Kai Venture stem bags were for holding water bottles and miscellaneous items that I wanted to keep handy. My front bag was a Swift Industries Zeitgeist bag that I used primarily for my sleep system and personal items. I used a Revelate Designs Ripio frame bag for food and cooking items, plus some of my electronic accessories. On the front fork, I had two king cages, which allowed me to carry two one liter Nalgene bottles. For navigation, I used a Wahoo Element Roam bike computer. Here's a look at the clothing and items I wore on me while I was riding. Most of these items I would wash daily. At the minimum, I would wash my chamois every day. I alternated between two Pactimo bib shorts, each with the brand's signature 12-hour chamois. I wore the 11 Pine Women's Uprising shorts over my chamois. They provided me with a sort of modesty layer when walking into stores, but I found that they also added an extra layer of comfort for my tush. I alternated between two smart wool sports bras. They res resisted odor very well, but took a little long to dry. I wore a Wahoo heart monitor because I'm a bit of a data junkie. Fun fact though, I used one battery for the whole trip and as of January, it still hasn't died. I wore this Pactimo short sleeve merino jersey pretty much every day on the trip. It has three large pockets in the back for carrying burritos and slices of pizza. 
There's a side zip pocket too that fits my small wallet. This long sleeve shirt from REI protected me from the sun and provided some warmth on cool mornings and descents. I asked Tracy to bring me this simple visibility vest for added safety. I wore this base bear spray belt in grizzly country and would keep it on me at all times, even at camp. At the start, I had two pair of smart wool bike socks that I would alternate between. I had to replace a lost pair in Salida. For shoes, I wore Pearl Izumi XL Summit mountain bike shoes with SPD cleats. They were perfect until the wire broke in New Mexico. I wore a lightweight pair of mountain bike gloves, mostly to protect my hands from the sun. Always on me was my chest harness GoPro mount. The footage in Canada was so awful because I didn't have the straps tight enough. This lightweight neck tube from Skidda was great for sun protection, getting the hair out of my face and keeping dust out of my mouth. My helmet was a mountain bike style Liat Trail 3. I appreciated having the visor to keep the sun out of my eyes. And these are my prescription Smith sunglasses. My seat bag primarily carried clothing. It could support carrying items on the top, like my camp shoes and hat, which came in handy. It was important to pack emergency items, like my rain gear, at the entrance of the bag followed by the items I'd need right away at camp, like my stocking hat and puffer jacket. Less important items could be deeper in the bag. Packing this bag was one of my least favorite tasks on the trip. The addition of two compression bags purchased in an outdoor store in Pinedale made it a little better, but it always ended up being an aggressive stuff fest to close it. My rain jacket was the Showers Pass Women's Eco Light Elite Jacket. It soaked through in all day rain, though I did stay warm enough while riding. It worked well as a windbreaker and was waterproof in short downpours. The Showers Pass Timberline pants also kept me warm, if not entirely dry. They were comfortable to cycle in and were nice to wear at camp on cooler evenings. This is one of the compression bags that I purchased. Here's what's inside. My second Pactimo Merino jersey, which I ended up wearing as pajamas. A t-shirt I purchased for going into town. My lightweight North Face shorts. A second sports bra. My Mammoth one half zip wool blend long sleeve shirt. And a pair of smart wool leggings. In the other compression sack, I kept my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer ultralight down jacket and Ghost Whisperer down pants. I also packed a pair of warm wool socks for sleeping. Other items in my seat bag were a second pair of bibs, waterproof socks, camp socks, a stocking cap, a warm pair of gloves, a rain cover, and a bandana. The Duder Rain Cover 2 is designed for 30 to 50 liter backpacks. It slips over my front bag quickly and cinches with a zip cord. A bandana is handy for a variety of uses. I wore my stocking cap most evenings to bed, but only my gloves a couple of times. These socks were good for town days. These Showers Pass socks really were waterproof and great for all day rain. I'd start the next day in these bibs while my others dried. The final items in my seat bag were electronics, including my black diamond headlamp I'd use at camp, my emergency front bike light, my power banks, and a helmet lamp that I rarely used. Let's move on to my front bag. I added elastic zip cord to the top for holding my tent poles and bike lock. Clips allowed me to attach a head net, pea cloth, and waterproof mitts as well. Once the bag was on the bike, items inside the bag were inaccessible. So items in this bag were almost exclusively those I'd need at camp. The exception was my water filter, which I'd hang on the top when I believed I'd need it that day. 
One issue I had with my bike setup was that my bag would bounce enough to hit my front tire when I was riding very bumpy surfaces and technical single track. A hole developed in the bottom of the bag, but a tough plastic liner that helps keep the bag its shape kept all of the contents inside safe. This is a spreadsheet I purchased and printed out from the One of Seven project. I kept it in a sealed baggie. It's cool because it shows the distance and elevation between key locations and services available. There is a GDMBR version and a Tour Divide version. See the One of Seven project.com for details. This bag has my tiny journal, pen, and earplugs. I journaled every night before bed and the earplugs are really helpful to block out sounds when camping to help you sleep. Each night I'd put all of my food in this sealed op sack, then put that bag inside a waterproof bag. I never had to use the bear line to hang the bag because there were lockers at campsites throughout Canada, Montana, and Wyoming. The line did come in handy for drying clothes though. This is my titanium trowel for digging duty holes. My sleep system is this down quilt with a bottom sheet by Zen Bivy. I use it with a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite Air mattress. And I also used a silk cocoon mummy liner for added warmth and for hygiene to protect my sleeping bag. I had a Sea to Summit Eros down pillow. My tent is the Nemo Dragonfly one person tent. I chose this one because it has ample headroom for sitting up. My only issue with it is that some rain would come in below the tarp when it was accompanied by wind. My water filter was the Sawyer Squeeze, which I used with a CNOC 2 liter bag. The extra coupling I show here was to be able to rinse it out using a water bottle, but I never needed to. This is my bag of toiletries. My friend Kate advised me to mix Neosporin, Aquaphor, and Benzoyl Peroxide and apply it nightly to saddle area. It worked great. I did wash daily with a small bar of soap. This is my medication bag. I took a daily multivitamin. This small piece of microfiber towel did the trick post cleansing. When a water source wasn't available, I stayed clean with wipes. I carried this lock until Colorado when I finally sent it home. I never used it. I do have a Scout bike alarm on my bike that I'd activate for peace of mind when I went into small stores. For larger stores, I'd bring my bike inside. This is a Sea to Summit head net for insect protection. Luckily, I never had to use it. And this is a pea cloth from a brand called Piss Off. You use it to pat dry for roadside pit stops, then rinse it with water. The cloth is fast drying and it's supposed to be antimicrobial. And these are my outdoor research helium rain mitts. I love these because not only do they keep your hands dry, but they can act like a windbreaker on descents to keep your hands warm. Here's one last look at everything in and on my front bag. Moving on to my tool bag. Most everything I needed to repair my bike fit into this wedgie bag from Sidero. I would recommend shortening the zipper pull because it would bounce side to side and hit my thighs when I rode. Over thousands of miles, that can become pretty annoying. My most often used items were my Leatherman, multi-tool, chain oil, and duct tape. The only mechanical I had on the trip was a puncture. Here's what's in my toolkit. A Leatherman squirt tool, spare brake pads, SPD cleats and bolts, and derailleur hanger, a couple of small containers of squirt lube, Crank Brothers multi-tool with chain brake and tire levers, wolf tooth chain tool, tire plugs, a valve core remover and tire sealant, duct tape and electrical tape. My frame bag has two pockets on one side and one pocket on the reverse side. On the drive side, I kept my electrical cords, coffee, coffee cup, utensils, cook set, and gas. The rest of the space was all stuffed with food, typically bars, oatmeal, and camp meals. 
My favorite tight space solution was how I was able to store my stove and flint within my camp pot using a collapsible bowl as the cover. I used a Garmin inReach for tracking and emergency communication. The other side housed a bike pump, steri pen, zip ties, a spare spoke, sewing kit, a paint stick for mud emergencies, and as much food and drink mix as I could stuff in. I carried a spare GoPro battery, lithium batteries, and SPD cards either here or in my seat bag. I kept my power cords handy so I could bring them in if I stopped at a restaurant for charging. I ended up using this sewing kit for multiple repairs on the trip. The curved needles and floss were in the case of a tire repair. Spare spoke and one of many zip ties I brought. Steri pen in combination with my water filter for extra safety. Bike pump. Bronner's soap for washing dishes and my kit until I lost it. Backup waterproof matches. Gas canister, which I replaced three times and camp stove. MSR strike igniter to light my stove, collapsible mug, bowl, and cooking pot. Collapsible pour over coffee maker and filters. I sent these home in Montana in favor of the quicker instant coffee solution. Instant coffee, titanium fork and spoon. Here's one last look at all my gear. Can you believe it fits all on one bike? Leave any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Happy adventuring.